Hello, this is Peter Joseph of the Zeitgeist Movement, and I felt the need today to take a moment to publicly express a few concerns regarding the incredible explosion that has emerged across the world, born out of the Occupy Wall Street initiative that began a few weeks ago in New York City. While the mainstream media continues to more or less ignore, criticize, and downplay the enormous growth, potential, and effect this global action against the financial system is having. I think if you put every single left-wing cause into a blender and hit power, this is the sludge you'd get. It's like Woodstock meets Burning Man meets people with absolutely no purpose. The independent media has been shining as the beacon of free speech journalism more than ever. And the interesting thing is, the more the mainstream media continues its status quo preservation tactics, the more public attention will seek out and support the independent outlets for the power and interest in the Occupy movement is simply not stopping. As of October 16th, over 1,500 cities in the world are now actively taking part in what is likely the largest global action ever seen. And I suspect many other seemingly different economic protests currently occurring worldwide will eventually unify with this global Occupy movement as well. And while peaceful protest has been a staple of this action, police brutality and violent outbreaks are unfortunately occurring in pockets, and this is something of deep concern to me. It is one thing for all of us to give lip service to nonviolence in such a situation, and it's another to be educated and strategic in your work to restrain it. I speak not only to participants here, but also to law enforcement, and hence the government and financial powers they represent. In the case of violence occurring within the Occupy movement, it's critical that if you see any person beginning to act in a violent manner, you work with others to stop them in a peaceful way or make sure others are separated and not triggered into it. There's an important book that I recommend called The Crowd, A Study of the Popular Mind which takes great care to discuss mass reactions. While many of us might think we can be completely objective and independent in our actions, the fact is we are deeply influenced by the effects around us. The mob mentality can take hold almost subconsciously. This is very important to recognize within yourself and others in order to be vigilant on both fronts. On that note, it is also critically important law enforcement understand these dynamics as well. If you, the police, expect the crowd not to be violent, then a concerted effort to withhold your communication of it is required. Just as a single rogue person can trigger an entire group to jump on board with violent acts, so do violent actions coming from you, the police. The more you show violence, the more likely it will generate it. And needless to say, well, there are many more protesters than there are police, and your weapons will be absolutely meaningless if these mobs ever were to turn against you. It is in your self-interest and protection to stop reacting in abusive manners. Every time you hurt or abuse another human being, you plant the seed of permission for them to hurt and abuse you and others. You have nothing to gain by using force and everything to lose in the end. Now, that all aside, there's a quick point I would like to make with regard to demands and transition. I don't pretend to know what will occur as this movement continues to grow, but unless an informed, relevant set of demands are made, its effect will be minimal. It is here I will speak with respect to the values of the Zeitgeist movement, along with my personal views on how we could possibly transition into a more humane, sustainable, balanced society. While many within the Occupy movement promote various reforms of the current economic and political system, others, such as the Zeitgeist movement, seek a complete overhaul. It is not the purpose of this video to expand upon the complete train of thought present in the Zeitgeist movement's observations and proposals, but suffice it to say, we seek a system based upon resource management as the starting point of all industrial decisions, coupled with a recognition that the efficiency enabled by our modern understandings in science and technology will be what can provide and meet the needs of the entire human population and create true sustainability. The manifestation of these elements are what comprise what we often refer to as a resource-based economic model. To understand the basis of this train of thought more clearly, I do suggest two books as well. One is called Critical Path by Buckminster Fuller, and the other is called The Best That Money Can't Buy by Jock Fresco. From there, the reader should begin to see that our current financially based economic model is intrinsically flawed and no regulation of this system will likely solve the real problems we face at hand. And if this view is accepted 
the view that we need to employ a completely different socioeconomic model to meet the needs of the human population and become truly sustainable on the planet Earth. The question, of course, becomes, how do we get there? In my personal view, the Occupy movement could be the seed for a transition out of the current paradigm and into a new one. By its natural evolution, the Occupy movement has characteristics that are very revealing with respect to the true nature of the problems at hand. The fact that this act of contempt is occurring without borders, or in certain cases, without even respect to the political system itself, rather targeting the financial system, shows an amazing new awareness. My first suggestion is to unify the regional movements into a global entity through representatives where each major region has a personal link to each other. I believe this is starting to occur already. Then meetings need to occur with these representatives to plan more concerted actions to reinforce the global unity and presence. Second, a decision needs to be made as to where your main focus is. To keep but reform the current system or to work to basically remove it as a whole and obviously there can be a transitional phase incorporating both as well. Either way, these global representatives would need to prepare a World Occupy conference at a set location for the media to digest where reform issues are presented, hence pushing recognition by the political establishment and the public. In the case of reform, this is where each regional group gains the recognition and organizes themselves to be able to engage their country-specific governmental bodies. In the case of complete revolution and the interest to remove the model itself and install a totally new system as advocated by the Zeitgeist Movement, a more radical undertaking is required. A parallel government needs to be created. Rather than work to get a seat at the proverbial table that exists, a new table needs to be created and the representatives of each region are brought in, along with legal and technical teams associated. Much detail could be explained on that, but let's leave it there for now. Eventually, this will create a virtual global institution that begins to prepare the new social system as the old system continues its operation and inevitable failure if you understand what the system is and how it can't resurrect itself at this point. And once the model is defined, a mass public awareness campaign is commenced as this new governing body and its work is announced. The tipping point will come once the public begins to see the merit of the new social proposal, hence recognizing the governing entity itself and eventually giving it priority over the prior political establishment. Now, what I have just thrown out here is extremely generalized, and I'm sure it raises numerous questions. I only want to express this as a logical train of thought in broad strokes of how maybe true global revolution could occur, and hence plant this seed of possibility and organization. There are countless people that have been talking about change for a long period of time, and my question to you is, are you really prepared to do what it takes to actually get the change done? If you would like to learn more about the Zeitgeist Movement, please visit thezeitgeistmovement.com and also know that we have over a thousand chapters across 70 countries at this time working in tandem to, again, create the type of social change that I have just described. So if you would like to become a part of the movement, please go to the movement site, click on the country, and go and find a chapter in your region or create one. Thank you for listening.